launch, launch, launch. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Technology is moving faster than most human beings can learn, which has forced militaries worldwide to take dramatic steps. For the United States, this means investing in the Skyborg Vanguard program, a project led by the Air Force Research Laboratory. Skyborg aims to integrate autonomous unmanned aerial vehicles with manned aircraft, essentially providing pilots with robotic wingmen for various missions. One of the primary goals of Skyborg and the Air Force Research Laboratory is to develop a family of unmanned aerial vehicles capable of autonomous flight and mission execution. The way the engineers see it, providing pilots with AI-driven teammates would dramatically enhance the capabilities of manned aircraft. Our senior leaders have been clear and direct in saying, we're dealing with new technology and we're dealing with a new threat. We need to go fast in determining the competitive advantage of autonomy and how to ultimately operationalize autonomy for the warfighter. Pursuing this goal has led to a wide range of experimentation with different types of unmanned aircraft. In some cases, autonomous drones can act as force multipliers, working alongside fifth-generation fighters and bombers to conduct missions that might be too risky for human pilots or require capabilities beyond human limits. Thanks to the rapidly expanding capabilities of AI and machine learning technology, it's theorized that Skyborg UAVs will be able to make decisions, navigate, and execute missions with minimal human intervention. One of the latest steps in the AFRL's mission has been the Autonomous Attritable Aircraft Experiment. where the term attritable refers to a system that is both low-cost and capable of being reused. This initiative reflects a strategic shift toward leveraging advanced technologies to create more adaptable, unmanned combat devices. More recently, the U.S. Air Force has begun favoring the XQ-58 Valkyrie. As part of the low-cost attritable strike demonstrator program, the XQ-58 has earned a reputation for being able to pull off high-risk combat missions. The Valkyrie is a long-range, high subsonic strike aircraft with a range of more than 3,000 miles. Designed to operate as a drone wingman, it has proven itself adept at scouting, defensive fire, or absorbing enemy fire, among other things. It also boasts a unit cost of just $4 million, a fraction of what the U.S. spends on a single F-35. According to its manufacturer, the XQ-58 can operate either autonomously or as part of a networked swarm, increasing operational flexibility and complexity against a wide range of adversaries. The U.S. Marine Corps PAC-P program, which stands for Penetrating Affordable Autonomous Collaborative Killer Portfolio, is focused on testing these new aircraft in as many intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and support missions as possible to ensure they are up to the task.
The United States military's use of unmanned vehicles dates back nearly as long as the technology. However, it was the MQ-9 Reaper that really proved that the concept of unmanned aerial vehicles could work in a battlefield setting. The MQ-9 made its first flight in February 2001 and was introduced into service in 2007. It was initially called Predator B, but was later redesignated as the Reaper, a name that reflects its more aggressive role compared to the MQ-1 Predator. The MQ-9 Reaper is capable of carrying a variety of weapons, including the AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and smart bombs. It was used extensively during the global war on terror, particularly in Afghanistan and Iraq. A more recent step in the advancement of aerial drone technology is the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray. Though not designed for combat, the Stingray is capable of performing an arguably more important role, that of an aerial refueling tanker. Introduced in 2019, its development further underscores the evolving role of drones, from reconnaissance and strike missions to support roles that extend the operational capabilities of manned aircraft. Being an unmanned system, the MQ-25 can perform its mission without putting crew lives at risk, especially in high-threat environments. And as it is primarily designed for use by the U.S. Navy, it is fully capable of taking off and landing on aircraft carriers. Another carrier-based UAV explored by the U.S. Navy was the Northrop Grumman X-47B. When it was introduced back in 2011, the primary goal of the X-47B program was to demonstrate that operating an unmanned stealth aircraft from aircraft carriers was feasible. The aircraft was able to perform autonomous takeoff, landing, air operations, and even refueling. In fact, it was the first drone to ever operate from a carrier successfully. Though it never got past the prototype stage, the X-47B remains integral to the expanding capabilities of military drones. Of course, not all drones are built. In the case of the QF-16 and QF-4, the U.S. Air Force actually reconfigured existing piloted aircraft into remotely controlled UAVs. The QF-16 and QF-4 are part of a series of full-scale aerial targets, which means they are primarily for weapons testing, training exercises, and evaluating tactics and missile systems. These aircraft allow the military to simulate real-world threats in a controlled environment, providing pilots and weapon systems operators with the opportunity to engage with targets that behave like enemy aircraft, often using real weapons in the process. As their names imply, 
the QF4 is a conversion of the F4 Phantom, while the QF16 was converted from an F16 Fighting Falcon. This process involves stripping the aircraft of its operational combat equipment and any systems that were unnecessary for its role as a target drone. Specialized remote control systems are then installed to allow the aircraft to be piloted from the ground. This included the installation of a flight control computer, telemetry systems for monitoring aircraft status, and a self-destruct mechanism to ensure the aircraft could be safely destroyed if something went wrong. However, the manned plane engaging the aircraft typically takes care of that. The air is not the only place you'll find unmanned vehicles. Over the past three decades, the use of unmanned surface vessels, or USVs, by the Navy and Coast Guard of many different nations. USVs like this Mantis T-38 Devil Ray have many different uses. Generally, they are equipped with sensors and cameras to provide real-time data and imagery for surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Like their aerial counterparts, they can also operate in environments that might be too risky or inaccessible for manned vessels, enhancing situational awareness without risking human lives. The Mantis dual hull design makes it much more stable and less likely to capsize during operation, even at high speeds. Though the Mantis may have value in wartime scenarios, the U.S. Navy is also working on a full-fledged drone fleet. Known as Ghost Fleet Overlord, the project aims to test and integrate autonomous ships into the U.S. Navy's fleet. The goal is to increase operational flexibility, reduce risks to human life, and decrease operational costs by testing ships that can operate without the need for onboard human crews. These vessels are equipped with advanced sensors, navigation systems, and artificial intelligence, allowing them to navigate the oceans and execute missions independently. One of the most notable of these is the USV Ranger, a highly versatile mid-sized vessel providing strategic advantages such as extended operational range and duration in various marine environments including the open ocean. The rapid expansion of autonomous systems represents one of the most profound transformations in modern military history. What began as remotely piloted aircraft for surveillance has evolved into a complex ecosystem of intelligent, networked platforms capable of operating across air, sea, and potentially land domains. Programs like Skyborg Vanguard and Ghost Fleet Overlord highlight a future where human operators no longer carry the full burden of risk, but instead command, coordinate, and collaborate with machines designed to operate at the edge of danger. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.